More of a fun, relaxing show today. I'm going to talk about some old school stuff in Orlando that happened. Before Disney Springs, there was actually a spot called Downtown Disney. And, and, and when it first opened up, it was wild, man, how the scene of Orlando changed dramatically. And we're going to discuss some things that you probably don't know about Orlando's nightlife. Orlando's nightlife was pretty off the chain. So we're going to go into that and... and, and Talk about a lot of different various aspects of the nightlife in Orlando, O-Town. Uh, it was pretty wild. Wow, 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 wow. Pretty interesting history. I guess you're going to have a lot of nostalgia on this channel, man. But it's going to be fun, though. And as usual, none of these statements are meant to deface anyone or any entity. These are just personal opinions and reflections of my own experiences that happened in years past. And these experiences I hope to enlighten and give insight to future audiences and to visitors into the City Beautiful. So let's get ready. Get your rhymes if you're in the car so you can spit to this beat. And then after that, we'll get right into it. Check it out. Let's, let's go. go. Dave Ski. Leave. Earth's Crash. Very, very, very. To detox. Leave. Leave every day. Another day. Like it's your last one, oh yeah. Make up, find a lot. Let's organize reasoning and not nah, spent two more years to get through college. Doesn't really matter anymore, anyways, cause knowledge of the gods lasts more always. All the way until this day, yep, all the way until this day, you wanna front. Woo! Yo, peace goes out to the, the, the God. Check, one, two. Yes, yes. Grab the mic, homie. Check it. Check it. Yo, you ready? Yo. The mic, mic. First to life, no strife on the mic. Know your name ain't great, but please spread it so nice. 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 Yo. Kick it. Living in my fourth bachelor pad at the time of the early 2000s, I was living in my fourth bachelor pad, and I was getting busy a little bit with a dime piece Brazilian broad, bum ass biatch. She used to pass out drunk on the couch after she finished carpet munching, jeans hanging down, ass out, snoring, mouth all open. I could have just released cold blue medicine balls in her face jizz hanging down her mouth like molasses syrup but i i didn't want to do that because i had i had respect for the place man i used to love my bachelor pads man so speed bumps with a relationship when your boyfriend girlfriend what is the what does the dude usually do breaks out man either goes out tricks off some cash or goes out and hits the bars so one particular night this is when Orlando still had a pretty good nightlife back in 2000, 2001. There was a spot close to downtown 
Colonial and Herndon. It was called the Roxy's. And keep in mind, I'm spitting this story here just to let you guys know, if you're outside of Orlando, just to let you know how the mouse runs the house and how the mouse took it upon itself to put severe destruction on the Orlando surrounding area's nightlife. You know, the mouse took Orlando and it, and it crushed it in a way that was that was awful, it was terrible. Because when you go into that world over there, they really do not want you to leave. They have their own hotel systems, they have their own bus systems, they have, a, they have their own work programs. A lot of systems that are in that world, it's really self-contained and anything else outside of that self-containment, they don't want it. They, in a very sneaky kind of a way, they destroyed parts of Orlando. It led up to different wars that affected society. And of course, those wars led to the Wuhan University SARS-2 leak, affected the whole globe. And next thing you know, you have club life before COVID, club life after COVID. And you kind of look at it inside of Orlando and see how it has totally changed into a path that just leaves behind incredible devastation. Keep in mind, I'm an old man. I don't know what's out there in the club scene, but I've seen it working inside of the hoteliers and concierge positions at various major hotel conglomerates. And we'll get to the hoes and the bitches and the club scenes in a minute. I just want to set all this stuff up properly for you. And by the way, bitches and hoes, that's just a term of endearment because of the hip square mindset. We study pimpology a lot. We'll just toss around the terms bitches and hoes and, you know, in the same kind of context as if uh, a classy gay guy would say something to one of his homies that might be into the modeling game and he might lash out at a gay must sucker and say something like, oh, oh bitch, you's a fine ass hoe tonight. tonight on that type of a vibe, you know what I'm saying? Like, so no, I'm not just trying to offend people, I'm just trying to put all this shit into context. Because we study pimpology, and we try to give a lot of different metaphors of pimping through the hip square perspective. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. We're just having some fun, so just bear with me on that. It's all in the spirit of fun, really. So uh, just trying to lay that out there so you can get a good feel for the show, good context. And I know that Orlando is pretty much a gay town. It's ran by a lot of gays, and i um, not trying to be offensive at all with the terminologies, I used to work with classy gay, classy gay male co-workers. Quite a few of my jobs, I never had a problem. It's just a situation of class, so I'm never really offended by the gay alternative lifestyles when they approach that lifestyle with a lot of class, a lot of, a lot of um, dignity within their own world. That's just that deep funk upbringing, man, from my pops and them. I had uncles on my mom's side, they were lightweight pimps. That's why my mom's never let me hang around those dudes, but yeah, my, come on, man. I, I grew up with my uncles and pops and them listening, listening to all kind of funk from all the heavyweights like Willie Hutch, Wynn McRae, William Devon, Confunction, Raz Construction, Lynn Collins, Marlena Saw, Dave Ruffin, Gene Carr, Eddie Kendricks, Brides of Frankenstein, Maggot Brain. You know, I've tasted the maggots in the universe and watching everyone now drowning in their own shit. <laughs> uh, Mary had a pimp, Rick James, LTD, everything from Funkadelic. And then when everything got reinvented through G-Funk, I was continuously being mesmerized with the transforming of the funk and morphing into something else. Always getting turned out with the funk, man. Especially when pimp funk was getting real deep through West Coast hip hop. Remember the first time I seen Short on Yo MTV Raps in 91, I think, when he had the vinyl green baseball coat with the with the big capital A, Oakland A's, sitting there announcing all the videos and announcing the break to commercial, standing there with the fat dookie ropes on. I was like, I couldn't help but to be drawn to that, man. I was some fly ass shit going on, right? Entire West Coast blow up, Dre, Easy e NWA, Ice Cube going solo, E-40, Dangerous Crew, Rapping Forte, Spice One, King T, The Licks, Ant Bank, Snoop, DJ Quick, MC8, Warren G, all those guys really, the West just kind of 
perpetuated that funk beautifully. And I was always drawn to it. All those guys, man, just continuously getting turned out and admiring and loving the funk. And then every year it got closer and closer towards um, knowledge of all these different things inside the game. Inside the game. I remember when Pops took us to the concert. I remember the first the first concert we went to was actually Funk Fest 83 Detroit. It was Zap, Gap Band, and the headliner was probably Funkadelic. And I'll never forget it, man. That was one of the craziest times I ever had as a kid. When Pops took us out to see that shit, man, it's just mind blowing. When you first walk into the arena, the stadium was all misty. It was like a, a nice fog of cannabis just there. And I was a kid, didn't know shit. I was asking my pops. I was like, man, what, what is this? And you know, you think you think I'm kind of bad. My pops was in, insanely offensive. If you weren't hip to 40s, 50s, 60s, 1970s black man in America, man. He'd, He'd be, be like, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, little nigga. It's, a, it's an incense. That's all it is. Incense. Yeah, that's what it is, nigga. It's just incense. They got to have this incense going on when these types of concerts happening, man. These types of concerts are going on, little nappy hair, nigga. Yo, you want some popcorn or something? Sit down and enjoy the show. You lucky your ass here. I ain't have to take you. Sit down and enjoy the show. Stop asking all these damn questions. That's my pops, man. So... That, that impression was not him totally. He was a very affable, calm, regular guy. But when he got into his moods, man, my pops slapped the shit at you. Just for spitting on the sidewalk wrong. He could get tipsy enough and pull out a rifle and shoot the TV. Because he got mad at a news story or some shit. But his anger was on the side of the, of the cops that shot the nigga or some shit. Like, he'd be like, Yeah, hell yeah, he should have shot that fool. Fuck that old nigga. Yo, I shoot him my damn self. Give me my shotgun. God damn, I'm gonna shoot that motherfucker right now. That was the type of environment that I was kind of raised up in. This calm, middle class type shit, but every now and then, when cats would get into the rooms, start kicking back those scotch on the rocks or triple bourbons with a gin back or some shit like that. Dudes is hardcore drinkers, man. Michigan, Ohio. These dudes were hard on the sauce. So poker night came around better get your sparring gear on there buddy you might have to duck a few blows something might pop off just kind of giving you the real deal here about every now and then bitch and hoe might slide up a nigga mouth but i'm not come on man i was raised up on a lot of different cool shit and it was just fun like uh like a, like an old dad's that movie with billy burr getting some more of his rocks off good movie just a bunch of old dudes, regular guys like like me and my pops and all the regular dudes that's pretty much almost extinct. How do we get along now in this modernized world where everything is offensive to everybody? Come on, man. We're just regular guys trying to shoot the shit and have some fun. And man, God bless Moking Woodbine, but yo, you know, if Patrice was here, man. Billy Burr would have had Patrice read for that part. You know what I mean? That's why you had Rosie in um, F is for Family. Take a good look at that character in that animated series by Bill Burr. That was pretty much Patrice O'Neill right there. Everybody knows it. Every now and then I'll go back and listen to Black Phillip, Dante Nero and them, just to rejuvenate me a little bit, give me some motivation because the guy was just such a regular guy, man. And he hit home with such deep ass analogies on how you should approach man excellence from an FBA standpoint, with a, a good amount of machismo still left in you. This is all just presets to the show, just to let you guys kind of chill. I never got offended when I was working around classy gay dudes. Never got offended when I was dating uh, hot lesbians. Um, so I don't want you to get offended when I'm doing this show, just shooting the shit as a regular guy. That's, That's all, man. Awesome. Just be glad you're not dealing with that type of dude. At least I'm trying to contextualize everything and put it in the proper way so all right big fat r.i.p to my pops and to patrice o'neill and all the other regular guys that have joined the lord and went on over to the next side so just to kind of go through a little contextual sentiment here to to give you the aura of a good context not to offend anybody i'm not trying to offend anybody but with all these terminologies i'm just doing the 
the metaphoric side of a pet mindset inside of a hip square analyzing things the way I see it from different angles and let you see how corporatocracy in Orlando will suffocate and destroy small businesses really quick. So I have to go through these stories and kind of describe things in a street vernacular just to get the feeling of it out there because clubs back in the days, they played their part in taking Orlando down a peg if you're coming from a local mindset. It's a strange way they did it, but it peeped, you gotta peep the angles. So we'll get back to the club scene in Orlando back in the days a little bit, the bitches and hoes in the club scene. First, I wanna set it up to where you can kind of sense and gain access to the wisdom that we have on 2D Talks. From looking at Orlando and looking how you have corporate monsters, gigantor corporatocracy here, that's always going against each other. Universal Sea, World Disney. These parks and attractions that are here are world famous, world class attractions, but they do crush a city. When you look at it from a small businessman perspective, the corporate monsters have a, a habit of coming down on the little mother sucker and just stomping them like a roach, man, ant, small bug. Even if you're a legitimate company and you're trying to pay your bills, you pay your taxes, you will still get suffocated and destroyed by corporate monsters. And looking at that from a lot of different angles on this show here, and see if you can see what I see on how they coordinate this whole city to where the matrix gets tougher. And it gets tougher every year. But to deal with the matrix here, especially in the South, Southeast, it's just the South anyway. But to deal with the toughness of this matrix, you gotta put that you know I mean, you, you got to put that mindset of a pee on a little bit, live vicariously through them, because who in society has a tougher mindset than a pee, especially an old school player? Their mind is so tough, they can get through anything, most things. So if I put that mindset on, live vicariously through them old school dudes, and then I can kind of, I can kind of maneuver through this matrix a little, a little bit easier. I'll understand it from a silky smooth kind of perspective. So with that, let's, let's break, break it, it on down. Down, 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 down. The big three, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld. How did those three entities become corporate monsters to take down and squash the rest of Orlando? How did it happen? Well, let's look at the history and let's look at the club scene. And let's look at how the big three sucked the energy out of the club scene and ultimately most of the club scene became destroyed or transformed into something so weird that it's not really tolerable by normal party goers. Orlando was off the chain, man. Man. What a city back then, back mid to late 90s, early 2000s. He had the Edge, Jungle Gyms, Antiguas, Back Booth, Kairos, Elements, The Blue Room, The Social, Decos, which, which became Zuma Beach then became the beach and social was next to that. Then off the beaten path you had the fourth fighter group. You had JJ Whispers, which turned to Embassy, Mr. B's which turned to Heroes, Roxy's, Cyberzone, and this was like the Maitland area. Club 436. And then you had the adult establishments. On top of all those clubs, which was like um one, two, three, four. Eight, ten, it was 14 clubs and you had the adult establishments which was Club Wana, the Circus Circus, House of Babes then you had everything on OBT side the flyest one over there I think was um, the Palladium Dollhouse was too um, touristy then you had Cleo's which was the black club but yeah, yeah man you had a lot of clubs in Orlando bro Orlando was off the chain back then and the development of Disney's nightlife, which was key to destroying all of these little these little scenes here. So Disney came up with the idea, you know what? We're just gonna take everything over. So in the metaphoric pimping mindset, I would say this. I would say Disney, Universal, SeaWorld. Those are the big three. I would say Disney's more like a, a pimping Ken kind of style. Pimping Ken from Pimpology, and a lot of different interviews online, which I've seen him, he's like, man, he's going for the juggler, man. He's the juggernaut of pimping. He just wants everything, you know what I mean? That's that's a Disney kind of a vibe. 
they don't want you to leave the park. They got their own systems in there. And that's like a pimp and Ken kind of vibe, like going for the throat. Everything that you got is going to go to Disney. I would say Universal's more like a like a rosebud kind of feel. You know, he's when he's in his territory, it's a very comfortable vibe. That vibe and that area is always ready to knock bitches from other blocks because it's so comfortable. And, and you can't really match City Walk with the other clubs inside of the other major attractions. Disney has clubs of its own too, but something about the universal vibe. It's more of a cool, suave, rosebud kind of vibe. He had that vibe from that from that book he wrote, American Pimp. It was just a real cool, comfortable vibe that I feel that Universal kind of matches that. And then SeaWorld is like more of a, I would call it a gorgeous Dre kind of vibe because of the, the soothing water spirit that Dre kind of has. You know, he soothes you a little bit with some really jazzy, relaxing words. You know, the, the water spirit is healing. He'll heal you with these soothing words, man. Very poetic. And then his hoes will never leave. The game of SeaWorld is like, you got exotic type esoteric knowledge to where chicks are riding on top of whales and dolphins. <laughs> that's, that's like a gorgeous Dre deal all, all day to me, man. Like, it's just so damn exotic and smooth and jazzy. The whole SeaWorld vibe is just so damn cool. But these are the, the three that are going against each other at all times. Now, keep in mind, Disney is not even in Orlando. A lot of people don't even know that from other cities. Disney's not even in Orlando, man. Disney is in its own city. You guys knew that? It's in its own city past Kissimmee, a place called Celebration of Florida. And Disney's damn near got its own zip code, man. A lot of people don't even think about that. It's not even in Orlando. It's, a, it's sectioned off way down there in the south, southern part of Kissimmee which is more of a reason why they don't want you to leave. Once you get off that block, once you get away from that area, then what could happen? Well, it could lose, it could lose his tricks, customers. It could get knocked for his hoes, which is the workers. They could see the vibes of those different parks and then switch up, switch up employment. The area is big. They don't want you to leave the area. They give you enough to do so where you don't have to leave because the area is so big at five parks inside of Disney. Well, four parks, but there's five big ass things to do. MGM, Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and then Disney Springs, which used to be downtown Disney. When they first started to develop it, it was wild, man. They had the big ass tower record store in there. Then you had the House of Blues. Then you had Hospitality Mondays, okay? They had sections of clubs right next to the Planet of Hollywood and sections of clubs where people that worked inside of hospitality could go enjoy the clubs and the whole scene. This was Disney's like just very intricate detail, organic way of marketing their product to where it was always about their subparts and themes underneath the Disney umbrella. It was tight though, can't lie, it was pretty tight. I mean, we could just go down there show your work badge that you worked in the area of Orlando, either with the hotels or airport. Show your work badge, you go in there, enjoy all the clubs for free. You can go ahead and set it off, get live, get fly. That was a tight gesture, tight move. That was the beginning of the move where Disney just wanted to take it over. That was kind of a fun move, but then you had other alternative covert facilitator moves, which were kind of, which were kind of harsh. I'll give you an example. I remember when there was a spot on McCoy Frontage. It was Frontage Road, right by the airport, going towards McCoy, coming from the airport, taking the left on Frontage. There was a spot right there, a little dirt road, where people could just park and watch the planes come in. This is just something that usually teenage couples would do to sit there and talk and chat, whatever. And they would sit there and watch the planes come in. So after a while, you would get a nice group of cars there chilling. Kind of had that, that vibe of the old school 50s and 60s drive-in theater kind of a feel to it. Couples would just park, man, just chill. So after a little while, you would have what pop up? Well, you had some hot dog guys. The vendors would pop up, man, selling some Franks, Franks chips and a Coke, five bucks, whatever. And they would have their peddler's license. They would have all of their, they would have all of their licensing. But after a while, you had inspectors come to the area. And they would say something like, guess what they would say? They would say like, well, this establishment 
This establishment where you're selling these hot dogs does not have a proper restroom. So, these Orlando inspector dudes would keep coming to this area, just pulling out little citations, whatever. You can't sell no francs here. Unless your establishment has a restroom close by. So, then you would just see the dudes kind of get knocked off. They would not try to sell there no more. Another example, I remember we had a table downtown. We were selling knickknacks at a table. They had a little, these little corner vendor stores. We had one, me and uh, Iz, DJ Israel from uh, Insomniac, head editor in chief of Insomniac Magazine, world's only hip hop trade publication. So we had a little table down there. We were selling mixtapes, selling magazines, fitted hats, selling the Scully hats, selling all the masterpiece stuff, no limit um, records. Some of the, some of this, some of that, some of the masterpiece stuff, some of this other stuff. The best the best items that were selling on that table were check it, it was the camouflage do rags and the no limit CDs. Every now and then, Five O would show up at the table and demand that we show them the peddler's license and the agreement that we had that we had with the building in order to sell trinkets there. So the frequency of Popo would show up, you know, once a month, then they would show up twice a month, then they would show up every week. Every time we set the table up downtown to sell these items, cool little money maker table here. Every time we set the shop up, Popo, Popo show up. Is he used to getting sick of this shit. He was like, yo man, how are we gonna how are we gonna comfortably sell these items to any guests that approach the table when Popo's always around? Which was true. It was like, you know, the crowd that was trying to buy mixtapes or hats, fitted hats, trucker hats, New York Scullies, the Scullies with the burrow on them, or even the, even the no limit stuff, the magazines, people that would try to buy those types of trinkets, man, they weren't really how you, how you say this? Some of them guys were sketchy. They just wanted to get some camouflage do-rags to match the Timberlands or some, something to that effect. These dudes didn't really want to go to a table where they know Popo was always around the table. You know what I'm saying? So that was just, it was whack. The vibe was whack. And then we were trying to put two and two together. It's like, yo, man, the city's changing. Disney don't really want nobody outside of Disney, especially if you're making money outside of Disney. And there was there's a spot right by Disney. There's a roadway that's full of off-brand hotels. The roadway is called 192. We used to have these funky motels over there. It was a Viking motel. I think there was the Sun Motel. A couple of other ones. Man, they just got squashed. All that mess is just whack, corny. They couldn't afford to keep those businesses open because of the Disney takeover. The ones that stayed open over there from 10, 15, 20 years ago, or the ones that are on the 192 right now, which is West Arlo Bronson Highway, you know, those are all like mad two star, two and a half, three star joints, man. Just whack, bottom of the barrel hotels, man. They just can't make a dime over there on that side of town because it's too close to Dizzy and Dizzy just keeps trying to shut all that bullshit down. This is how it is. It's like a, it's kind of like the, the blob kind of feel. It just kind of swarms and, and bloop, 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 bloop. swoops you under, man. You can't do no business when the big Mick is trying to get his pockets fat. He'll squash you out, take over your block territory, and take all your customers. This is how it is. This is how it is down here, man. That's how it was. Just pimpology like a motherfucker, man. Straight up. So yeah, so you had some of the clubs downtown, especially little lounges and stuff, had to close down because they kept moving the ordinance back from 4 o'clock to 3 o'clock to 2 o'clock to 1 o'clock. You know what I mean? It used to be open until 2.30 downtown. Now I think it's like 12.30. So just a gradual closing down of sections of, sections of Orlando so that the big... Mick could get his money, man. You know, it's like that tuxedo that that mouse wears, man. That's, that's a pimped out ass tuxedo, man. He's like, hey, Mickey could talk, man. You know, it'd be something like this. He'd run game down on you like this. That's right, baby. Mouse ears got to get his paper, boss. You know what I'm talking about? That's right. All you motherfuckers shut that shit down because I'm here to get my paper first, baby. You know what I'm saying? Let me get mine first. Then y'all can do what you want to do. You know what I'm talking about? 
But this right here is the big mix place, baby. This is my house. And the mouse wants the house, baby. We don't need no water. Burn, motherfucker, burn. Mac of the year goes to Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. You damn right, right, bitch. You damn right. right. Yes, indeed. Best believe that, bitches. That's what, that's what Mickey's saying to everyone, man. And here's the deepest part of all this shit, man. The deepest part of this shit is when they would enforce, they would casually enforce slave wages to where they could make it to where nobody would complain about the slave wages. And this takes me back to the Roxy story at the beginning of this excerpt here. And let's let's take it from there. I think you'll enjoy this story, how it relates and how it can confirm that the Big Mick was nothing but pimpology, pimping can, pimping like a motherfucker. The Roxy, Herndon Avenue in Colonial. My bad, it was Bennett Road. It was down the block from Herndon. Herndon was where the old movie theater was. Decent club. I would never really go there on Thursday nights. Thursday nights was foam night, EDM house night. House was okay, but the EDM, electronic dance music, which was electronic daisy movement, something like that. And it would be too off the chain. It would be too wild because that EDM movement would attract what? Lots of different types of drugs. So back then it was X. They were dropping X heavy in those types of clubs. I didn't know what to expect too, too much because I never went there first time there. Had a great time though. Check out the deal. I just kind of blazed out the apartment because I was having trouble with this relationship. It's a bunch of bad relationships, man. I had to do the roller coaster shit, so I had to take a break from this relationship. Threw on some, um, what I have on that night? Just threw on some khaki outfits. Some, threw on some khakis and a vest type shirt with some uh, Timberland loafers. You know, I just threw some shit on. Had I had the body so I could flex the pipes and shit. I had that tiny kind of body from Friday. Devo. Devo. Throwing up full Cadillacs five sets of five with a pause all that type of shit running nine minute miles and all that so i wasn't really looking to pull no bitches but when i got in there and seen the hoes it was mostly white hoes but it, i had to look at it i had to look at the whole scene with a jeweler's eye because i was i was kind of skimming the crowd and you had a lot of funky fresh fine looking third world white bitches walking around man and a lot of them bitches was on X. And it was the wildest shit I ever seen. I'm, I'm so glad that I went to experience that shit because that was one of the wildest club scenes I ever saw. Yeah, man, I paid the fare, walked in, checked out the scene, glanced at everything. Two stories, I was on the first floor because they had the stage with the foam was about to pop off. I didn't know nothing about foam night, man. First time I ever went there. So went to the bar, got me a Heineken, and um, shot a bourbon. You couldn't really order a, you know, these types of bars, you couldn't really order no private stock, Mickey's Big Mouth, Elephant. They didn't have any shit like that. Not even a St. Ives Fruit Punch. So you had to make your own. You know, I was, had to grab like a Heineken, take a sip, then pour the shot of bourbon inside the Heineken bottle. Then that one beer could last you for the whole night. So I was chilling on one of the back walls where the walkway was. One foot on the floor, knee bent, the other foot on the wall. You know that type of pose, right? Just checking out the scene like that. So I had my little seven mile bodega stance going on. Just chilling, kicking it, checking out the scene. Every now and then, chicks would walk down that hallway. John blazing white chicks, pogs with bodies like black chicks. Crazy shit I've seen, man. So. This club was kicking, man. You had this thumping ass beat with this house EDM shit going on. That cock hero kind of thump, doom, doom, doom. It was just energy like a motherfucker, man. And I was just chilling. And I didn't even really move from my spot. I seen bitches walk past this hallway trying to catch a bitch with eye contact and then a pog might come over to me after I snatched the eye and I ain't had no game at all. I was just standing there trying to flex whatever I had, you know, for the for the record, just the body. That's all I really had. So I would snatch a little bit on the eye contact on the look and the 
first chick that comes to me, let me emphasize the word you. She would step to me, walk into my face and go, how are you doing? And on the word you, she would just grab Richard Johnson like, bam. She'd have her whole hand on my joint, looking at me, talking to me. And I looked in her eye, I was like, all right, Miss Pog, how's it going? I'm digging where your right hand is. So can I put my, can I put this tongue down your throat for a few seconds? <coughs> and then she'll go something like, um, oh, I'm not a slut. What are you talking about? And then she'll walk off, obviously high as fuck. So bitches in this club were walking around high. Plus they had them chokers on. Chicks back then used to wear them chokers and they used to have the pacifiers hooked to the choker. Oh, they would have pacifier rings and shit. These were little indicators that you know they were on that shit, man. Bitches was in there dropping X. So two other chicks walk behind her and they would basically do the same thing, but more aggressively. They would kind of walk up to me at a faster pace and be like, look, he's, he's already, already bricked, bricked, up. Up. bricked up. And this was starting to make me feel kind of fucked up because these high bitches is coming up on me like that. Fuck around, catch a charge, right? Spotty's senses start tingling, man. And then I'm like, yeah, let's get a move on right quick. So I kind of was like, all right, let me just let me just ease this scene down a little bit and get off of this get off of this wall and walk around a little more to the other parts of the club. So did just that, walking with my beard, comfortably going closer to the stage where the foam was. And I'm thinking to myself, nah, I'm not gonna get into no foam. I don't know what's in there. That shit looked kind of wild. I was playing a little cool role, chilling, listening to the music. And once again, looking at some fine looking pogs walking around. So caught the eye of this little five foot six, maybe blonde hair, freckles, real happy, happy looking chick, man. Really nice, happy looking girl. Do a little eye contact, whispered something in her ear once, whispered something in her ear, something like, are you enjoying the form night? Real simple, cool, corny little line. And she was just smiling, man. So we started dancing, started dancing, getting down face to face. Then she turned around and she would dance her back to my front. Then she would back up a little bit more, back a little bit more, back up a little bit more. And I don't think she was high. But I'm, I'm real skeptical now from the previous interactions with those other broads. So, dancing a little bit, I couldn't help myself, man. I'm late 20s or whatever. She's only maybe 23, 24, perfect age. And she turns around. I put my beer down on the bar. And she looks at me, grabs my hands. Then she comes close to my face. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, ah, she's probably going to ask me to buy her a drink or some bullshit. I was waiting for the bullshit, right? So she she puts her lips into my ears. She says, wow, you're pretty strong. I'm not sure if she if she felt my Johnson when she was dancing back to front to me because I was halfway bricked up from the other chicks that was at the walkway. So when she turns around and she says that as I look back at her putting the beer down, then she kind of, she kind of backs off of me with her hands in my hands still. And then she looks at me and smiles, and all of a sudden, booyah kasha, this bitch just jumps, jumps on a nigga's dick. I was like, what the? Yo, it caught me so off guard, man, that shit was crazy. And she was just rolling with it, but when she was doing a freak on my joint, she starts doing vertical up, vertical down, hip flexor moves, gyrations. So she's just, she's on me, bro. She, she jumps on me. Burgundy boots wrapped around my ass. I'm cupping her waist. She starts she starts doing the freak on Richard Johnson. She starts doing the freak. Still crazy smiles. I'm thinking this bitch gotta be high as fuck. But it was just the wildness of the vibe of that night, man. And I'm like, alright, man. I don't wanna do this type of shit. You know what I mean? Like that'd have been embarrassing as fuck. You ever get that sensation that you like 20 seconds from nutting? It's like, man, I gotta put this bitch down. Cause she was like around me doing this shit. So I had to naturally put my arms around her. I didn't want to grab her ass like that. But I said something corny in her ear. I was like, yo, you want to go check the stage out? Check the phone and put her down. Her feet were on the ground now. She looked at me again. And then I just had to say, it. I was like, 
Yo, you not high, are you? You didn't drop none of that shit that you before you got here. She was start laughing and shit. Then her her cock blockers came. You know they always got some cock blockers. So her her friends came and snatched her, and they went to the phone. I went to the back and kind of kept my eye on her from a distance. I mean, you gotta think, man. This chick, white broad, a third world fine white broad, with a black body. This bitch's body was like Kima Russo from that uh, crazy popular Instagram profile. Kima, Q-I-M-M-A-H, Russo, or something like that. So just imagine, a, imagine a white girl from Europe with a body like that. And this was like one of a few, several women, young women in the club with these types of bodies. Something was going on that night. It was just something in the air, or that was in the air that was so wild. Kind of sense that girls gone wild kind of spirit when you've seen them old VHS tapes with the girls gone wild videos in Bourbon Street or some type of a beach weekend kind of feel when chicks just snatch the top off to get beads and then and then booyah you got titty just unleashed just they just unleashing them things revealing all top and then they just shaking just shaking them shits like they get funky crew that shake them titties single kind of the pre-stages before two life crew blew up that one hit um get funky crew shake them titties it was like that kind of a vibe on that type of shit so it had it had that feel to it that freaky kind of wild bourbon street unleash your bra kind of feel same kind of feel as like a black beach weekend feel but it was all third world white bitches european broads it had that same feel but it was like a white version of it and i was just there man trying to navigate my way through this shit trying to see if i can get some type of score going with that chick that i met i thought i had lost her because they went around the club probably dipped into the foam so i was like ah you know fuck it i just went on ahead and took a step back and tried to see what else was going on and i'm hoping in my mind that i won't reach my give up point a certain amount of time go past one o'clock and you reach your give up point and you just leave because I was already blue balls like a motherfucker bad. Went to the damn Olympics to the Olympics. Balls requesting songs now, like Shea Baker, Born to Be Blue, the Blueprint, requesting some jazz greats, Paul Desmond, Feeling Blue, or Shea Baker, Almost Blue, Blue Ballaholic, Blue Bonic Plague, like a motherfucker. Two fat Smurf bellies. But I was walking towards the exit. Luckily, I actually seen the girl. Jumped on my joint. She was still smiling and laughing. I was like, yo, you know how you put your thumb to your ear, your pinky to your mouth as a gesticulation for the phone. So I was like, yo, let me get the number or something. Let me give you a call. Got the number. A sigh of relief in my soul was like, yo, finally got to connect. Maybe it might be able to get a good score on this. So call her a few days later try to set up an initial meeting set up the initial meeting and she, she says she's, she's living at the park i was like what first time i ever knew this type of shit was going on in, in the mouse so i went to go see her didn't know where i was headed went down into the park it's the same old type of deal man locals we don't ever go to the park at all not too much once every blue moon because Big Mick wants that paper. So you're gonna be dropping three or four bills anytime that you go out there. Unless you go in the House of Blues or Disney Springs, which is like a casual kind of outside plaza or something like that where you could shop and stuff. So going into Disney looking for the barracks, the Disney International Program Lodge. They used to call it that, the, the Disney International Program. So I'm looking for the lodge. I find the lodge, the dorm of where these young ladies are staying. What a scene, man. Finally find the chick. Opens the door to the dorm. Walk in. I see Soul Brothers coming out of the spot, laughing and giggling. She's coming out with a hot looking sweatpants, tight belly shirt deal with the knotted up thing where you can see the stomach. Alcohol bottles laid out by the sink. It was a it was a plush dormitory. And as you're walking through these different styles of barracks, from line to flying, man, all I see is fine ass third world white bitches. Czech bitches, Prague bitches, 
Brussels, breezy, Serbian bitches, turkey, subs, hot ass snacks, Curacao bitches. I'm like, I, I kind of knew what was going on, but years later, copped all the wisdom, and now I know what the hell was going on. You see, Disney is in a constant promotion of princesses. They continually promote this aura of Princess Moraes. The Big Mick has to make sure that no other conglomerate can beat them at the princess game. That's their hustle, main part of their hustle. You know what I mean? Giselle, Tiana, of course Cinderella, Pocahontas, Nala, Rapunzel, Aurora, you know, from Sleeping Beauty. You got, then you got Belle from Beauty and the Beast, Ariel, Jasmine. You have these cartoon characters and then inside of the park, they bring these character chores to life in real tight aerobic young female bodies, right? This is what they're constantly promoting. So the aura, even if it's not a, a cast member with the costume on, you have to have that aura of, yo, this princess is always walking around in all parts of the park. Even though, even though they might have on a regular cook uniform or a hostess uniform, you know, Disney wants to promote that princess aura. So they, yo, man, they got to look bad. They got to be baddies. This is Mackin at its, at its highest level. You know, every woman that works in that park has to have princess potential. You know what I mean? Even though they might not be a cast member hired in one of the princess roles. It's just that aura because they are the masters of the princess game. And of course they have their villains. You know Disney, you know Disney movies got them villains in it. They're gonna sell that sorcery a little bit too. But their main game is that princess game. And princesses are not really a big pile of bar hags, man. No sir. They gotta have them bitches looking fine, man. Straight up. Especially when they're alive inside of the parks as real human beings. Alright, so Lithuanian broad, short, five foot four, twenty-three, blonde hair, freckles, body like Kima Russo, tight, incredible. But guess what she's really doing in Orlando? Guess what she's doing in America? You know what I mean? This is this is the this is coming up on the disadvantages of these international programs at Disney. Sometimes that corporate gigantic monster might overlook these little nuances where these females might be in trouble in their home countries. And yep, she was. Something happened to her dad and he was going through some mishaps with the Lithuanian police and she was trying to escape something. Don't really know the details, but that shit was an adventure when I was hanging out with this with this chick. So, but she's going through pandemonium, so I'm taking her out to get her you know what I'm saying? Instead of taking her out on a date or whatever, I'm taking her out to get her paperwork, like her regular ID or whatever. She's trying to do some things in here. And and the only guys that would help her out seemingly were just soul brothers, man. Because, you know, the fantasy will always kick in. You know what I mean? Like, Disney, man, it does, it does have a sexualness to it, man. Like, let's see if I can explain it. Like these types of chicks, man, the international program from Disney, if you meet one and smash, look at the look at the ways that you can come into nut awesomeness. Like you could actually you could actually reach that organic lyric inside of that song by D Train, you're the one for me. You could actually reach that lyric, bust a nut on the cloud. Imagine yourself as a regular dude winning with one of these types of chicks with incredible princess potential you smash pull out bust a nut on the cloud and you just entered into some wild enchantment kind of fantasy where you you giving pearl necklaces to disney princesses it's wild man it's like a there's a crazy sexualness in disney that most regular dudes know but they'll never try to discuss it or talk about it because it's too it's too dangerous man orlando has this this code man you can't, you gotta really be careful when you're talking about the mix Steamboat Willie come out 
mess around jack you for your low dunks or something and you think about how the club interactions kind of adds to the fantasy you know what i mean as to the it adds to the underground sexualness of disney i mean these princess potential broads dying pieces from third world countries are sneaking off the disney barracks to go to foam night at an edm club and drop x and party with soul brothers like a motherfucker <laughs> i mean that in itself is just wild as the sexual imagination takes over. But let me stop talking about this shit, man, before I get in trouble. Anyway, I didn't even smash, I didn't do nothing with the broad. The Lando factor kind of set in. That's just something we call when things go bad here, it's just called the Orlando factor. So she was low key trying to get her green car hustle on. Had to take her back to the, the barracks and drop her off. But these are just things that happened. And I'm not totally sure how rare those types of cases are where hot broads from overseas are just trying to get into the program just to slide into the country some kind of way. Of course, this was years ago, man. I don't know how it is now. It's probably real. It's probably a little bit more tighter now. It's probably real strict now. Not sure how they work in it, but from what I see, from what I see online today, they have photos every now and then they'll show photos on other types of websites to let you see princess potential type broads and they're all walking in the crowds chilling yeah so that was another blue balls olympiad right there got the blue balls olympic medal right there all day you know what let's get a quick intermission and then we'll come back with a story about a typical party night in orlando and let you see why they had to shut this motherfucker down man Straight up. Stay tuned for that. What's up, kid folks and loved ones? This is your main man, Slink Johnson, BKA Black Jesus. Black Jesus. Letting y'all know about Skyber, the customizable tipping app. Skyber is the only app willing to pay out reparations. Check it. The first FBA to use Skyber after hearing this gets $100. Whoever uses it afterwards can still get tangibles forwarded to their accounts. Ain't no law against companies helping with reparations, right? Let's stop all these coon babbling trends and let's set a trend to help FBA stack paper. Search Skyber app on Google Play or the App Store for more details. Big ups to Diplo, Diplo System D128, DJ J Mob, and a special, special shout out to Lork D, Lork, aka Dave Ski, for making it happen. Skyber app, y'all. Skyber.org. Batman on the beach, by the way. Big ups to Batman. Big up also Father Lux for pointing that out. He's like the almighty YouTube digs. The master of digging up all kind of stuff on YouTube. Big ups to Father Lux. Sliding me all the beats. But yo, one more quick story then we'll finish this out. Mid 90s, my favorite era. This is the reason why they had to shut all that shit down, man. Orlando was so damn off the chain. They had to shut that shit down. Keep in mind, man, Orlando got two mayors. He got the city mayor, which watches the airport money, the county mayor, which watches the money of everything else. Then Disney is its own entity, it's its own city, so they watch their own money. You gotta think about that, right? When Disney calls a shot in a covert manner, Orlando shuts the shit down because that's the number one money maker. Think about it, man. Orlando Magic ain't never gonna have no championship team, man. Because if they go that far, they'll take money away from the mouse. Mouse runs the house, man. You know what I mean? All right, so you know what? I don't want to go over an hour, so check this. We're going to do a part two to this episode. I'm going to keep you in suspenders for a little bit, but I'm going to leave you with a disco record that kind of gives you the the spirit of Orlando. It's Dave Ski, man. It's my little town, you know, so we'll go ahead and exit out of this episode with a little song. This is called The Mousetrap, the Roller Skating Rink Remix. And then just look for the part two, and I'll go ahead and crank the whole part of just me hanging with the Dominica Posse, going out with the Boricuas, cold chilling like a crew with the juice, cold chilling with this crazy posse that we used to run with all through Orlando, through the nightlife in the mid to late 90s. So y'all go ahead and click on part two when you're ready, and I'll go ahead and um, let you do a comparison and contrast of nightlife then to now, let you see the differences. All right, peace out, one love, Dave Ski. 
takeaways from this show the mouse runs the house always and they market their products man strongly through sexual subliminals and all their movies through the princess game and sometimes even through third world white girl magic and when you come over here if you're a tourist it's Kissimmee that's how you pronounce the town that Disney's in it's called Kissimmee and just bring a nice couple bags because the mouse Steamboat Willie is the Mac of the year every year here and he's the epitome of what Rody Mac always says man it's, it's about, about the money, money. <laughs> alright one more little quick gift if anybody guesses the break to the song you know, I'll shout you out, give you a prize or something like that. Disco break. The mouse trap. And try not to use who sampled, right? Fair use, by the way. We're just studying mixing techniques and Orlando sociology through song. The, the mouse, mouse trap. trap. Roller skating rink remix. Check, check, check. Hey, yo, Dave Ski, man. We need to do a roller skating remix to the, um, to the mouse trap joint. Word? Everywhere you look, country cowboy players running more head games of Gale Slayers in and out spin moves, lateral pitches, what city don't got two mayors? Straight up country ass, boss hog ridges, and you ain't touching none of that That's your network with a tow truck cooter and a skunk hat <laughs> We're the good old boys Yes sir, now bond down to the law, they make it up as they go It's a hand and green eggers if you don't know, now nah, you know Do my donuts in the monster truck, in a muddy ass pig farm No attractions in sight, no long arm up the law Broke jaw, the police they sells around here Moonshine beer, get burnt, wrapped up in a Chinese rug Get a tall coat, shoulder shrug Jimmy Lee, what happened? Sun downtown's like a mug, mug, but the mug, mug. Is in his huh? Sun downtown's like a mug, 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 mug. This is the town that you don't know mm. Quasi loco, baby, East Orlando Capital of scams and blim blam So many illusions you'll make you say damn A little ways away from celebration Whoa, getting dough from every nation I remember when they made they own downtown Politics up in here will bring you down Down My pinto bean. Gotta stop fighting over little bitty pieces. Pearl man, already rich in the boy bands. Pulled off one hell of a scan. Trans, continental airlines. Wham! Opie's lost mad cash. Loot dash. Caught with the Indonesian rash. Hard to swallow. And he's sitting in a heavy bag. Pull him out round. 200 million dollar. Hella at your boy. Will it mean a telling scout? Yo, chips ahoy. What you think you are? Clocking G's, please. Can't nobody tell you nothing seen. Got that dream to be the model of the century queen so front like a sexy bitch go ahead doc and walk that catwalk all together showing all for one another yeah but was it g at your feet to get in fast you rock to go rock it check the band was the money at Luke this is the town that you don't know Quasi loco, baby, East Orlando Capital of scams and flim flam So many illusions will make you say damn A little ways away from a celebration won't Getting dough from every nation I remember when they made they own downtown Politics up in here will bring you down, down All the way down So down in the old town Feeling down in the old town The poor man's in late Feeling so down in the old town Feeling down my brother Feeling down in the old town Feeling down Feeling so down in the old town Feeling so down in the old town But some of you sugar jars might pick me up Yeah, me too, baby, you know It's the mouse trap here, baby We're all at okay, tell out to 
Motel, it's uptown, west side, east side And every place in between, here it is, baby You take a left, turn out the mouse Man, you wanna up in the alley, get a monk Young is out there, yo, scam for the day Bro, man, you know he was a Bernie Madoff Jr. He kicked it off, you know And then he got tons of low scam The blue box hustle, remember that? Ten dollars, get the car home scam Legal shield consultants, 30 day success formula E-commerce, MLMs all day, Melaleuca Yo, forced to buy products, collateral lending hustlers Reverend Zach Tim, remember the hustle? Ain't no way he went out like that Nah, dude, this times, man Yo, he got out the mousetrap But a lust cook stuck in the mousetrap Big ski navigating the mousetrap Is this thing in the mousetrap James Mall, they trading the mousetrap Lou Boogie missing down in the mousetrap Rip B I G K E N caught up word in the mousetrap Y'all get y'all roller skating on to this jam here, dog. Hook it up, yo. Right skate. And then left skate. Right skate. And then left skate. Swag it on out, baby. Right skate, yeah. And then left skate. Swag it on out. Keep on going. Right skate, yeah. And then left skate. Skate on. Skate on. Shouts out for the Lux, Herb Scratch, the Chulo, J Mob, Sissy P128, Insomniac, Ponzi, Dr. Westlake, Batman, and J Smooth, Board of Beats, Real So Candy, all the big dudes, Star Report, King Flex, Boyce, and all them, and Dub C, CJ Mac, Dave Ski, One Love, I'm out.